Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking about the domain and range of functions. Now, uh, there's a lot of different type of questions when it comes to finding the domain and range of functions. And uh, uh, oftentimes, you're given the graph of a function and you're told to identify the domain and range. And that is the case in this particular problem. But uh, I have another question for you here. Why is this even a function? Okay, maybe I could just throw in a question here, a bonus question. Uh, if this is a function or why is this a function? Okay, so if you know the answer to uh, this question, go ahead and put that into the comment section along uh, with the domain and range of this function. So obviously the answer is yes, this is. This graph does represent a function, but why? So if you're taking any sort of algebra course, functions are tremendously important and you definitely need to understand all these things that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to show you the right answer uh, to this uh, problem, i.e. the domain and range, and I'll tell you why this is a function in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. That definitely helps me out. So let's go ahead and first answer why this graph represents a function. Now, there's a lot of kind of details I can get into, but I'm simply going to just tell you, uh, you can use this test right here, something called the vertical line test. Now, if you never heard of the vertical line test, um, you definitely need to um, kind of learn this, right? So you probably haven't learned as much as you need to about functions. Okay, now again, functions is a huge topic, uh, so I can't possibly try to explain everything here. But effectively, the vertical line test is a kind of a graphical test that we can use to determine whether a graph is a function. So the way the vertical line test works is if I draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph, okay, not an angle line, a perfectly vertical line, anywhere through this graph, and if it only intersects the graph one time, it passes the vertical line test. So if you had some sort of graph like this, for example, you can obviously see a vertical line passes through that uh, more than once. This uh, passes through two times, so this would fail the vertical line test. So because this graph passes the vertical line test, it does represent a function. Okay, so that is kind of the bonus question here, but let's go ahead and get into the, do uh, the domain and range of this function. Uh, and of course, you can kind of see this point right here, uh, 2, 1, which is uh, representing or is the location of this coordinate right here, okay, this open circle. So the domain and range are what? Well, there's a couple different ways you can express this, but effectively the domain is all x is greater than 2, where x is is a part or element of the real number set, and the range is all y is greater than 1, where y is an element or a part of the real number set. Now, there's another way to express this using interval notation. Now, if you just said these right here, I would uh, definitely give you full credit, uh, but you want to be more specific and be like, okay, well, if x is greater than 2, what um, is x? Okay, like in other words, what number system are you? Uh, is x a part of? And we are talking about the real number system. So as you kind of get into more advanced mathematics, these little details are not like trivial, right? You need to kind of put this in. But I'll show you another way to express the domain and range here in just one second. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100%. And multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about functions, uh, their domain and range. Okay, so again, there's a lot to kind of get into about functions in terms of, uh, you know, what is the domain? What First of all, what is a function? Um, you know, what's the domain? What's the range? Again, uh, this is a big, big topic. So we're only going to look at the domain and range of a function graphically. But let's just do a real, real quick review of some basic concepts. So here we have a function f of x. Let's uh, call it f of x is equal to x squared, okay? So we have this x and we have this x squared, all right? Now, remember, in uh, terms of functional language, f of x is equal to y, all right? So f of x is equal to y, just in case you didn't know that. So if you're looking at this as a quadratic function, it definitely is. This would be 
its respective quadratic equation. y is equal to x squared. So f of x again is equal to y. So I can just change out this f of x and put a y right there, right? So uh, again, this is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic function. Now, if we take a look at the graph of this, hopefully you remember that the graph of x squared, y equals x squared, is a basic parabola. Let me just kind of erase. Matter of fact, I'll erase all of this here just so it gets a little bit more room. Just kind of set up this explanation for those that might be a little bit confused. We'll kind of do this little problem here before we take on this bigger problem. Okay, so right here is the x-axis. Here is the y-axis. So if I was to graph y equals x squared, it would be effectively a parabola that goes through the origin and kind of bounces right there at 0, 0. And there you go. And if we can kind of see that, in fact, this is indeed graphically a function because this graph is passing the vertical line test. Okay, so what is the domain of a function? Well, the domain is all the input values, okay, all the input values. So what can we put into the function? Well, uh, the input value into the function is this x right there, okay? So all the x's are the set of kind of um, the x variables, what we call the independent variable. It's our input variable. Now, uh, oftentimes a function, you just can't put anything into a particular function. There could be uh, very well restriction. So the allowable set of input values you could plug into a function is what we call the domain of the function. Okay. Now, once you put in all the set of these allowable input valuable, uh, excuse me, input values into the function, we're going to get an associated output value. Okay. And all those sets of uh, the respective set of output values based upon the input values, this is called the range of a function. Okay, so again, the range is dependent upon the domain. Okay, that's why we call the y variable the dependent variable, x is the independent variable. So basically, what I want you to do is to associate the uh, uh, domain of a function with the x uh, uh, axis. Okay. All the x values that are going are kind of covered with the graph, right? And then the uh, y values, wherever the y values are going on, that's going to be where the domain is at. So if we look here carefully, what are the set of allowable inputs into this function right here? Can we put in negative values? Yep, no problem there. We could put negative values because we're going to be able to kind of plot those on our graph. We could put in positive values. Matter of fact, we could put in any x we want. All right, because this graph is spanning the entire x-axis. So here, the domain would be the entire real uh, number system. Okay, it would be all these real numbers. There would be no restrictions on it. So you could basically say x uh, is just a part of the real number system. No restrictions at all. Any x value you can plug in here. And you can't, I can't think of any x value because there isn't whether it be a positive, negative number, decimal, square root, doesn't make a difference. We can square it, not a problem, okay? But what is the respective uh, range of this function? Well, that's a different deal. Now, if you look graphically, this graph is only going from the positive, it's, it's only coming from zero to the positive y-axis, okay? It's going up this way, right? It's not covering any negative values. So the range is going to be all y's greater than or equal to zero, okay? Well, y is a part of the real number system, okay? Because that's where this graph is covering. It starts from zero on the y-axis and just goes up all the way to positive infinity. So you gotta be able to read a graph and uh, you know basically determine the domain and range. And this is a pretty simple example. Now, if you're already confused, I'm kind of, um, quickly going over major concepts in mathematics about functions, uh, domain, range. I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on all of these topics, but I'm gonna really uh, suggest that you check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, or uh, for some of you that are more advanced, I wanna check out like my pre-calculus course, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So looking at this graph, we already know it's a function. So again, the domain, we're gonna look at the x axis okay this graph is covering what on the x-axis well 
it's starting from here and covering kind of basically think of it uh, like if the sun was casting down here, what would be the shadow? It's covering all these X's, right? Okay, so it's not starting. This open circle means it's not including two. All right, so we got this X, Y point. So this is two right here. Okay, but that is open, meaning that it does not include the point two. So it's everything greater than two this way to the right. Okay, so once you kind of just like focus in on the X axis, like, okay, this graph is covering where on the X axis, everything greater than two, we can go ahead and define that as the domain. Okay, so the domain is all X is greater than two, where X is an element of the real number set. So this would be uh, an appropriate way to define the domain. Another way you can do this, as I kind of indicated in the beginning of this video, is by using something called interval notation. All right, so this is kind of a, um, probably a, this is more commonly used for more advanced mathematics. Now, I really don't want to explain uh, interval notation. It's not that difficult, but basically, if it's greater than, but not greater than or equal to, we're going to use a parenthesis. If it's greater than or equal to, we would use a uh, square bracket. Okay, so if we had this situation, we'd use a bracket like this. If it's uh, just greater than, we use a open parenthesis. So this is our left hand, uh, our left uh, part of our interval, and then our right uh, part, this is going to positive infinity. So you could write this notation this way, to positive infinity. So if you don't understand interval notation, I teach this in my pre-calculus course as this, again, uh, when you're in uh, more advanced mathematics, you will use interval notation, but uh, all of you out there should be able to understand this. Okay, so that is the domain. Again, you wanna focus in on that independent variable X and just concentrate on the X axis. And this can get a little bit tricky especially with, uh, you know, more difficult graphs. But let's go ahead and take a look at the range. So the range, you're going to focus in on the y-axis. So this graph is covering what on the y-axis? Well, it's starting from uh, all values uh, greater than 1. Okay, so remember, here is y, 2 is x. So we're concentrating on 1. So everything above 1 is what this graph is covering. Okay, on the y-axis, so we can go ahead and define that as the range. Uh, being uh, all y's greater than or equal to 1, we're y's element of the real number system. Or again, we can use the interval notation. The range is 1, and it's going towards positive infinity. Okay, so if it was going down like this, this is negative infinity. This is positive infinity. This is negative infinity over here. And this is positive infinity over here. Okay, so again, the domain and range, uh, your ability to identify this is going to be a common task, especially as you get into more advanced mathematics. And there is a ton of additional things you need to know about functions and relations and inverse functions. And I can just go on and on and on and on. But here's the deal, okay? Whatever you don't understand, you can learn, right? Math, you know, although there is a tremendous amount of information, it's nothing beyond your ability to learn. It really comes down to your um, ability not to learn, but your ability to organize yourself and to focus, okay? And again, I think a lot of times students uh, also kind of skip a lot of steps. They're like, ah, I don't want to learn that foundational stuff. I just want to learn what I need uh, to know for tomorrow's test or quiz. If you're trying to uh, learn math by cramming information, be like, I don't care about that other stuff. I just want to know what I need to do great on tomorrow's test. It's not going to work out too well, okay? Because you do need all that additional information. So really, there are no shortcuts if you truly want to learn this. So I'm going to encourage you to, you know, uh, look for your weaknesses. Don't be afraid to find them. If you find something you don't understand, that's something that you can improve, and it will all add up in a very positive direction for you. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.